Hey guys, Generative Fill is coming to both Premiere Pro and After Effects. I don't have any inside information, but I saw something that just made me realize that we are maybe, I'm predicting, six to eight months from seeing Generative Fill finally break outside of Photoshop and finally land right in Premiere Pro and After Effects. Guys, I predict that it's gonna change literally everything. You know what's interesting though? You can actually take advantage of Generative Fill in both Premiere Pro and After Effects right now, but admittedly in kind of a roundabout way. This is actually what I'm gonna show to you in today's tutorial. First guys, I need to show you what I saw that made me realize that we would be adding and removing objects from our preferred video editing and VFX software before the end of the year. It was actually two things. The first thing is this little button inside Premiere Pro that usually goes unnoticed. And second is this really cool video that I found that Mr. Grateful made on Instagram. I think he actually made it in conjunction with Adobe. Take a look at this video for a few seconds and tell me if you can tell how it was done using only Photoshop's generative fill and then a little bit of Premiere. Now this video is cool, it is impressive, but I'm sure a lot of you figured it out. It's not really that magic at all. It's something you could do right now within Premiere Pro or After Effects. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your Premiere Pro project and you're gonna find a frame where you wanna add something to this video or change something. Now press this small little button that you may or may not have used before called Export Frame. Export Frame has come in handy in the past for creating clean plates, getting a still for a thumbnail, and much more. But today I'm gonna show you how to use it to bring generative fill into Premiere Pro and I'll talk about some of the limitations of this method as well. Okay, so here is my project and you can see a video of me sitting in this office right now. You're probably gonna be wondering why the background looks different compared to the one that you're usually used to seeing. It's because I've been using this generative fill Premiere Pro workaround within this very video. This is actually what the office looks like in real life. Now let me show you how I did this. First, after I exported that frame off of my Premiere Pro timeline, I brought it into Photoshop. I then used Generative Fill to start adding static items to my static background. I'm highlighting the area that I'd like to insert something in. I then click Generate Fill, and then I type in the item that I want to generate in that area, and then I click the Generate button, then wait a few seconds for the loading bar to finish, and then the item appears. Then I'm gonna just do this over and over and over again till I'm done populating the space with all of the items that I want to create. Inside of Photoshop, I go down to the very bottom and I blind my original still frame. This is gonna leave me with all of the remaining generative fill frames that I made. Import that Photoshop file that I just made into Premiere Pro. I'm gonna import it so that it brings in all those layers individually into its own bin. I'm then gonna mosey on over to that original video file that I had originally got that first frame from. And then I'm gonna go into that bin that I just created and start layering all of those generative fill Photoshop layers onto that original video file. It then looks like this. I'm basically creating a digital matte painting. And that brings us to our first limitation of this. You're not going to be able to generate and fill moving items. I think once this feature finally comes out in Premiere Pro and After Effects, this first version will probably be limited only to the addition of static items. That doesn't mean though that with a little bit of VFX magic, you couldn't bring some of those static items to life, but I just wouldn't expect version one to be able to do that automatically quite yet. Now, if you look at some of these items that were created in Generative Fill, I'm just always amazed at how well Photoshop is matching the light and the color of these items compared to the background that they're placed in. This is truly amazing, and while it's not expert compositing, it is, in my opinion, pretty dang good. This brings up our second limitation, which is pretty similar to the first one. If you're in a situation where you actually can't control the light and the color, like maybe you're outside or maybe you're even inside and the light moves for some reason or changes light temperature, in that case, those static objects that are placed in that digital matte painting are no longer going to match the background and they're gonna pop out in a weird way. They're not gonna look naturally placed anymore. I know this is kind of frustrating, but I have two pieces of good news. The first thing is you can totally get around this by just making sure that you are shooting in a controlled environment. Like inside of a studio like this with one single light that is locked in place through a strong sturdy tripod. The second thing is remember I said this was just gonna be the beginning. I said at the beginning of this video that I thought maybe six to eight months, you'd see this within beta Premiere Pro and beta After Effects, but that would only be version one. Think how fast this AI wave has been developing over the last couple of months. For version two, I don't think we're gonna have a lot of these issues that I just talked about. And don't even get me started on version three where all of these limitations are gonna be completely non-existent. Guys, I hope even the idea of these future versions are getting you excited because at the end of the video, I'm gonna go into detail regarding what I think they're gonna include. 
let's first take a quick time out from the future and talk about the past. Many of you watching have generously invested in our digital products in order to enhance your video editing workflow. We've actually taken note of this guys and we want to show you our appreciation. So we're actually bundling a variety of our most sought after products. Imagine a video editing suite that includes unique digital lens filters. This is our pack called ePRISM. It's basically a digital version within Premiere Pro of the physical lens filters that you usually see in music video sets. We have both volumes one and volumes two. The next Next pack in this bundle is the Vintage CRT Titles Pack. We also have our 100 Seamless Transitions Pack. We have our Cinematic Titles Pack. We also have a massive collection of handmade light leaks. We have our Impact Transitions Pack and so much more. In fact, in this bundle, we have about $375 worth of assets that are all now accessible for a single price of only $97. It's basically our way of saying thank you and our way of enabling sophisticated video editing to be accessible to everyone. Links in the bio, let's move on with the video. So what do I specifically see future iterations of generative fill in Premiere Pro and After Effects actually looking like? Let's imagine first version two. I bet that we'll be able to actually place moving objects within our videos and actually be able to see them interact with the environment in a natural way. This means that we'll no longer be dealing with simply just a still matte painting, but more like a dynamic matte video, perfectly composited within that original video. Now for version three, watch out, this is gonna freak you out. I am imagining the ability to do some crazy dynamic video background extensions. Think about this, I have shot and edited so many vertical format social media projects that I later wished I could have had a landscape version of. Vertical video is great for TikTok and Instagram, but what if I decided that I wanted to paste that same content on YouTube? Using a generative video background extension, I could literally use generative fill to create video pixels out of midair and give me a beautiful landscape alternative to any vertical video without having to scale in. I got a question for all of you guys watching out there. What would you expect to see in version four? And like we've discussed in the past, do you see this affecting your bottom line in a negative or in a positive way? 